everybody, it's Amy and welcome back to another drawing tutorial. In today's video I am drawing a chihuahua in coloured pencils and I really hope that you enjoy this tutorial. So jumping right in now to this tutorial and as you can see I've already drawn the main part of the dog's face and I'm now focusing on getting in a lot of that fur around the head and ears of the dog which can be really tricky to do. The first thing I would say that is really important for drawing fur is to pick the right colours for drawing fur. So if you are someone that struggles with picking the right colours, I actually have a video on how to use reference photos which explains my colour picking process, so that might help some of you out, just click the i-card above the video to watch that. So picking the right colours is really essential for drawing fur because there are so many colours, tones and textures in fur. So if you look at any animal you will see various tones in their fur and for this dog I can see a lot of creams, light browns, ready tones, dark browns and so on. So it's really important to get the right colours when drawing fur. It's not just picking the right colours that is essential for drawing fur either. You will also need to think about the undertones or base colours, mid-tones and then darker tones as well. So what I mean by that is when you are studying an animal, you really should try and pick out the lightest and darkest areas of the animal and try and reflect that in your drawing. So if we go back to my drawing, I'm actually using that black pencil just to map out some of the fur clumps, but also to highlight where some of the darkest areas are and make it easier for me to draw the fur and then what I like to do is start filling in that section of fur by starting with the lighter tones. So I like to use the side of that pencil just to add in some layers of coloured pencil and I start off with the lighter tones that I can go in and gradually add more darker layers. So it can be really hard to go in with a dark colour first of all and then try and add the lighter tones so that's why I always start with the lightest colours. So I really struggle with animal ears and I think it's because the colours in the ears are a lot different to the colours in the fur and also the texture of the ears is a lot different to the animal's face and body. So if you are drawing an animal then it's really important to look closely at your reference photo to make sure that you are really understanding the structure of that animal. So for the ears I'm using a lot of the grey tones and also flesh tones as well and all I am doing is adding in some very light layers of the lighter shades of pencil for my undertones and I'm just gradually adding in more and more layers and then incorporating some mid and dark tones in the areas that need it. So when I feel that an area has enough layers of pencil down, the colours look accurate and I'm ready to render that area with finer details, then I start to apply pressure to the tip of that paper and I often use a lighter tone to burnish the colours into the paper. So if you look at the drawing of the dog, you can see how there's a process of adding a lot of layers of pencil, building up on those tones in one area, rendering that area and then moving on to the next section. So in terms of which coloured pencils you should use now for animal drawings, in all honesty it really should be down to personal choice and which brands you prefer. But just to give you an idea on the properties of some pencil brands, I'll just talk about some of them now. So firstly, you can use wax-based pencils such as the Prismacolor Premier pencils and the Caran d'Arche Luminance pencils. And I'm actually using the Luminance pencils for this tutorial. And the wax-based pencils are great for adding in a lot of layers. So when I build up a lot of fur texture, wax-based pencils are good for that because of how creamy they are and how well they blend together. A downside to them though is that because they are so soft it can be really hard to get in those finer details. So for example really highlighted strands of fur or whiskers. So oil based pencils such as the Faber-Castell Polychromos have a much harder lead so they might be a better option for you when it comes to drawing fur because they can get in a lot of finer details. Or you could always use a mix of both. So now what I'm going to talk about is how to actually draw fur and clumps themselves. So firstly, I think it's really important to know that you shouldn't worry about getting every single strand of fur in the right place. That's going to be impossible to do because of the amount of fur you will have to draw. But to help you get as close to your reference photo as possible, you should definitely try and do the following things. So firstly, you need to be looking at the type of fur the animal has. So for this dog it has very fluffy straight fur with long and short fur clumps so already that gives me a good indication of how I'm going to draw that fur. So you wouldn't want to draw the wrong type of fur for the animal you are drawing. So for example you wouldn't want to start drawing really curly or short fur for this dog because that isn't going to look realistic. 
Next, you need to think about how you are going to then draw that fur with your colored pencils. So a really helpful tip I have for that is to draw the fur in the direction it is going in. So look at your reference photo to see how the fur is dispersed and then reflect that in your drawing. Also, like I just briefly mentioned, make sure that you are drawing fur at the right length. So for example, for this dog, under the neck it has very long fur. So I want to make sure that I am drawing long fur with my pencils. And you also want to make sure that you are drawing your fur in clumps or sections, not single strands. So to help you pick out certain fur clumps or sections, look at your reference photo and see what sort of shapes or patterns the fur is making. And that should help you to decipher certain areas to draw from. So now what I want to do is talk a little bit about how to draw certain colours of fur and particularly very light fur like the fur I'm now drawing on the neck of the dog. So this fur is extremely light, almost white looking, so it can be really hard to know what colours to pick for fur like this. So when I'm drawing this light coloured fur, I really am trying to study that reference photo and pick out tones that I can see in the fur. So remember that white isn't just plain white, so even if you are drawing a white dog or another animal, there are going to be lots of tones in that white fur. So some general tones in white fur is grey and creamy tones, and that is what I can see in this photo of the dog. There's a lot of cream, beige and warm grey tones, so I'm going to make sure that I add some of this tone to the really light fur to give it some depth and detail. There's also a lot of transition of colour in the dog. So for example, the face of the dog is a really lovely dark brown colour, and then that transitions into a much lighter toned neck area. And then the ends of the fur are really dark, so that's where I think wax-based pencils come in handy because they blend so well together. So to transition from the lighter tones in the dog to the darker tones, I really am just using the side of that pencil and adding in several layers of pencil and then softly blending the lighter and darker tones together. And it's giving the impression that it's the natural colourings in the dog. And that is what you want when you are trying to draw animals realistically. You want all of your colours and transitions between colours to look natural. So that is why it's so important to work in layers and softly work those colours into each other before you add in your finer details. Now obviously you could use some colour swatches or hold your pencils up to a certain area on your photograph if you really struggle with transitioning colours, just so that you can get an idea of how to go from lighter to darker tones, but just remember to work really slowly with coloured pencils. And just going back to the dog now, I'm actually using a lot of the buff titanium, which is an off-white colour, almost like an ivory colour, just to apply a harder pressure to the lighter and darker tones and to get them to blend together more easily and then obviously render this area. So just to recap on this tutorial for drawing fur, it's really important to start off by adding in your lighter tones first and slowly build up into your darker tones. So wax-based pencils are really good for adding in layers and oil-based pencils are great for adding in finer details. When you're drawing fur, look at the type of fur it is, draw the fur in the direction it is going in and make sure that you look at the length of the fur too. To transition colours well, make sure that you use the side of the pencil to blend colours together and lastly, make sure that for lighter fur, you look and see what tones you can see. And that just about finishes off this tutorial and I really hope that you picked up some helpful tips for drawing fur. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so that you never miss an update from me. I upload art related videos three times a week and I have a list of all of the materials, products and equipment that I use in the description box down below. But anyway, I look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye everyone.